All right, NSA leaker Edward Snowden will likely accept asylum in Venezuela. That is according to Glenn Greenwald, the journalist who interviewed Snowden and first published the NSA leaks. Snowden is still believed to be at the Moscow airport this morning. Meanwhile, CBS News has obtained a government video that warns intelligence officers about insider threats to our national security. Our senior correspondent John Miller is a former FBI assistant director. John, good morning. Good morning. Well, the intelligence community has been struggling with how to deal with the insider threat. Now, there's the old version, where an intelligence officer might become a spy for a foreign government. But what about this new version, young, tech-savvy intelligence officers who are stealing truckloads of secrets, they say, on principle? First, it was Bradley Manning, an Army private with a security clearance, who sent hundreds of thousands of sensitive documents to WikiLeaks. Now, Edward Snowden, an NSA IT contractor, has released documents detailing the agency's most secret programs. Is this the new espionage, the spy who believes for the good of his country he must reveal its secrets? I think that the public is owed an explanation of the motivations behind the people who make these disclosures that are outside of the democratic model. Well, what kind of sense of moral superiority does it take to feel like your moral judgment trumps the moral judgment of not one but two presidents, both houses of Congress and bipartisan majorities in both houses of Congress, the American court system, and 35,000 of your co-workers at NSA. Retired General Michael Hayden headed both the NSA and the CIA. Decades of experience has given counterintelligence agents a profile of the insider threat, an employee dissatisfied at work with a tendency to believe they're underappreciated or under financial pressure. Profiles that would fit two of the insiders who did some of the most damage. CIA agent Aldrich Ames and FBI agent Robert Hansen both sold secrets to the Russians. They did it for the money. And I think at least in the case of Hansen, he did it because he just thought he was smarter than everyone else. CBS News has obtained this video, a joint project of the CIA and FBI. It was made to warn intelligence officers. I'm Special Agent McLean. This is Special Agent Kim. We're with WFO. We'd like to talk to each of you. Of what to look for if the threat to national security is the person sitting in the next cubicle. What just occurred to me, the number of times he would change his screen as I would walk into his office. These two most recent cases... Private Manning and, and Mr. Snowden, they're a bit different. They're probably doing it for ideology and almost this romantic, absolute commitment to transparency. How do you screen against that? Very, very difficult. How do you monitor that? Very, very difficult. Jack Johnson is a former top official with Homeland Security. Your threats are going to change. They're going to change based on technology. They're going to change based on incidents, change based on legislation, change based on political events. You have to be able to meet that change. Manning and Snowden offer a bold new proposition, not one about smuggling a sheaf of documents out to sell to an enemy, but the ability to electronically steal hundreds of thousands of documents in a keystroke, and a belief that a government that keeps secrets is the enemy. What is new, that in this modern, connected era, the trusted insider who betrays us is far more empowered to do damage far greater than these kinds of folks were able to do in the past. And so we just have to be even more vigilant. So, John, how are they going to be more vigilant? How do you ferret out? How do you prevent the future Edward Snowdens? Well, this is a sweeping program. It's more than just this video. It actually comes with electronic billboard ads in the areas where you've got intelligence facilities, classified government contracts being done by large private entities um, promoting awareness. But there's also a, a security end of it where they are tweaking and in some cases rebuilding the security systems in the government's computers so that if a Bradley Manning starts to exfiltrate hundreds of thousands of documents that aren't really in his area of study, that alarms will go off and that, and that th these things would be caught sooner. Snowden's a more special problem. He had wider access. So, Snowden was not a spy. Hanson and Ames were. I mean, is there, a, is there a difference in terms of what they're looking for? 
You know, there's a vast difference in terms of the motivation, but the signs are largely the same, which is, you know, who's acting strangely at work, who seems to be leaving with stuff, um, who's in the system uh, taking out material that may not necessarily have to do with the stuff they work on. Can I quickly ask you about this new poll out this morning that shows 55% of American voters believe Edward Snowden is a whistleblower rather than a traitor? It's an interesting poll. It's uh, evenly divided across political parties. It's, 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 um, it shows that there is a thematic battle going on, Nora. Uh, the government's narrative that, you know, he took an oath and he violated that oath and he broke the law. And the WikiLeaks narrative that Americans need to know what's happening behind their backs with their government. And that's a, that's a propaganda battle that's unfolding on both sides. Mm -hmm. Okay, John Miller.